you remember when Joe Biden said he was never involved in any of Hunter's overseas business dealings? We knew that was bogus from the get-go, but over time, the evidence just keeps piling up against Biden, to the point that the lies stopped even being convincing. Biden went from a confident lie, denying it all, to his administration and himself just ignoring and downplaying and running from the evidence. The fact is, we don't have to wonder if Biden and Hunter were involved in corrupt business dealings overseas. We have Hunter's laptop to tell us. We have leaked cell phone calls of Joe Biden to tell us. We have emails, text messages, White House logs. Hell, we have Joe and Hunter posted up at a golf course with foreign nationals that we said they were doing business with. And all of the crimes the Biden family were involved in carrying out. We have the receipts. We have the digital archives. And we have testimony now from Hunter Biden's ex-business partner, a former trusted friend of the Bidens, Yesterday, Fox News' Tucker Carlson sat down with Hunter Biden's ex-business partner, Tony Bobolinsky, where Bobolinsky said that he presented evidence to the FBI of numerous Biden family felonies, and they just ignored it. Tim was not there that day. I think he was out of Washington, D.C., but my lawyers had an hour, hour and a half call with him that Friday night, October 23rd, and subsequent calls through the weekend and the following week when I was then coming on um, your show to uh, provide the facts to the American people. And um, they were supposed to be working a follow-up interview. And Tim Tebow, in his last discussion with my legal counsel, was, listen, we know Tony's cooperating. We appreciate all the information he's provided. Uh, we will follow up with you. We're definitely going to have him come in uh, for a follow-up interview or spend some more time on this. And um, I haven't heard from him since. At all? Nor have my lawyers. No communication whatsoever? No. Since before the 2020 election? Correct. So outrageous, but not at all surprising, I must say. We've been pointing out how deep the FBI's corruption goes for going back decades, going back to spying on MLK, to raiding Trump's home, raiding Mike Lindell, raiding Mark Hawk, and everything in between. How, el how, how else do we know that the FBI is compromised? More federal agents were sent to drag a Catholic pro-life activist out of his bed for an altercation with a Planned Parenthood volunteer than were, than were soldiers sent to Pakistan to kill the mastermind behind 9-11. It's outrageous. The evidence is in. Hunter's ex-business partner is sounding the alarm. What does that tell you? Joining me now to weigh in on this is founder of Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch, attorney Larry Clayman. Larry, great to have you on the show. How much more evidence do we need of, of the Biden family's corruption before, uh, before we start charging, before we start uh, having trials against the Bidens? Well, actually, we have trials against the Bidens right now. Uh, our citizens' grand jury at Freedom Watch has indicted Joe Biden Hunter Biden and James Biden for bribery, what they're talking about with Bob Belinsky, what Tucker Carlson was interviewing him about. I've actually had contact with Bob Belinsky quite a while ago, and he told me that he was you know, undergoing FBI investigation. Obviously, it's no longer the case. I'll be contacting him again. In fact, I did actually, left him a text message uh, last night, or rather a, a telephone call. I said, can you testify in front of our trial? We have indicted Joe Biden for the bribery. We've indicted Hunter Biden. He's being tried. You can see excerpts of that at freedomwatchusa.org. We have the right to do it. In 1992, Justice Scalia wrote, majority opinion, United States versus Williams. The grand jury belongs to the American people, not the three branches of government. Now let's get to the Justice Department, my once semi-proud alma mater, because I saw politics there too, but not like you see today. It's not just the FBI. It's the entire Justice Department. Department. They've become the Department of Injustice. They'd rather terrorize January 6 protesters, and then they've got these hack judges in the federal court in D.C. that are rubber stamping, sending these people to prison even without bail, or making them do forced confessions. We live in a Gestapo state right now, and consequently, you can't expect any justice with regard to Joe Biden unless it comes from the people and we're doing it peacefully and legally. And when we get the conviction, and we're convinced we will, we're confident we have a citizen's judge, we will seek a sentence, and then we will seek to carry it out peacefully and legally, asking the military and the police to do it. And if they don't do it, we have a right of citizen's arrest in 48 states. We're not gonna be physical, we're not, we'll be peaceful. He may not turn himself in, but it will be a lesson for the American people 
that we have the justice system in our own hands, just like it was for our founding fathers. Let me add one other thing, Addison. This character, FBI agent Tim Tebow, I had contact with him in another case. And he was supposed to be investigating a whistleblower who came forward that I represented at the time, who left with 47 hard drives of what he claimed was classified information. I never saw it. We turned it over to the FBI and Comey. Tebow was working with Comey. He was working with Peter Strzok. I had contact with all of them. So I know about burying investigations because that investigation was buried as well. Whether or not there was any validity to what was turned over, no one heard anything about it again. So this is typical of the Justice Department. They'll grab information. Uh, they'll pretend that they're investigating. They'll bury it. If you seek it in a civil case, they'll claim, oh, we can't turn it over because it's subject to criminal investigation. This is a total cover-up of what happened. And I hope that Tony will come forward and testify in our trial. If not, we've got the interviews that he did with uh, Tucker Carlson. Yeah, well, and, and there's, there's just no telling uh, how much different the outcome of the election could have been. There's no telling how many people would have cast their ballot differently if they had known all of this, all of this Larry. Well, that's right. And it's not just a question of how you, whether you cast the ballot. It's a question of justice. It's a question of whether or not the American people are being properly served. And we have a situation now with China where they're running over the United States, both militarily and economically. This president is basically an employee of China and explains why he does little to nothing. And of course, I think Trump should have done more too, but at least he did something with regard to China. And we still don't know uh, the origins, according to the government, I know the origins, any logical person does, of COVID-19. It came out of the lab in Wuhan, China. Talk about another cover-up. The seeds of that came from our own lab in Fort Detrick, Maryland, which was given to the Chinese to gain a function research with a grant of $3.7 million by the Obama-Biden administration. The bottom line is this, Addison. Our government is corrupt to the core. You can't believe a word it says. It's lost total credibility with the American people. Well, and, and President Donald Trump, you know, is, is taking a little bit of action. He's getting in on the fun himself because when we say our government is corrupt, we mean our government and the institutions that uphold their propaganda, right, and, and that, that spew their propaganda, like CNN. President Trump is suing CNN for $475 million in punitive damages for uh, what he says are, are defamatory lies and slander that they were spreading about him on their network. Your thoughts on this lawsuit, Larry? Uh, I'll tell you, I've watched a lot of CNN, unfortunately, and uh, I can tell you that it seems like he's got a pretty good case. I think he does have a good case, but unfortunately it's in front of a federal judge a judge by the name of Rag Singdahl, a judge who was appointed by Trump, who is an establishment Republican who is afraid of his shadow. I've been in front of him two or three times. That court down there in the Southern District of Florida, and of course, you know, I reside down here. The court in Florida, and I'm a citizen of Florida, I've been in front of that court many times. The Democrat and the Republican appointees uh, shy away from issues. They're frightened. They don't do much of anything. Uh, there was one judge who made a good decision with regard to the magistrate and the, the seizure of all his documents of Trump. And I've had her in other cases. She's absolutely terrible. Uh, so don't hold your breath with the federal court in, in the Southern District of Florida. Highly politicized, worried about protecting their own turf, their own skin. And I hope that Trump was able to prevail because he was called Hitler. And it's very similar to a case that I brought uh, in my private capacity for a professional golfer who was a member of LIV, and all those golfers at LIV are being called the same thing. And we have defamation cases pending as well uh, with regard to, to that golfer. So it is a very good case, but prevailing in the Southern District of Florida is a long shot. President Trump previously had a case in front of what is one of the worst judges in this country. I wrote about it in my book, It Takes a Counter-Revolution, Wake Up America. He brought a RICO case against the Clintons that went up, wound up in front of Donald Middlebrooks a complete political hack. And of course it was dismissed. I predicted it from day one. I think I predicted it on One American News. So don't hold your breath about what's going on down there. Yeah, it's a good point. Larry Clayman, thank you so much as always for, for breaking all of this down. Really appreciate your insight. You're welcome. God bless, uh, Addison. Thank you.